I'm making this video in the hopes that it might help faithful anointed chosen ones, yes saints, understand what they should be doing immediately before Jesus Christ returns. My hope is that some of the faithful anointed ones will watch this video and understand it so that it might get some collaboration amongst them, those few remaining ones in the world, so that the overwhelming task that I will present in this video might be accomplished through their collaboration and understanding. I hope to convince the few remaining faithful ones that this task will be achieved with the assistance of Jesus Christ himself. And so even though what I am about to present may seem overwhelming, I hope that you will receive great comfort from understanding that Jesus Christ will be intimately involved with those people who are participating and collaborating. So what is this enormous task that faithful ones will be expected to participate in? Well, I believe the answer can be found in Revelation chapter 17. And if we go to verse 14, we can see what the faithful chosen ones will be doing. These will battle with the Lamb, but because He is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, the Lamb will conquer them. Also, those called and chosen and faithful with Him will do so. So in my opinion, this is one of the last tasks that the faithful ones will be found doing immediately before Jesus Christ returns and that God's will will be accomplished. And so if we go to verse 17 of the same chapter, you'll notice what it says. For God put it into their hearts to carry out his thought, even to carry out their one thought by giving their kingdom to the wild beast, until the words of God will have been accomplished. So please understand that these ten kings will have been overthrown immediately before God's will has been accomplished. And so the fate, faithful ones should very carefully focus on who these ten kings are, what they have done, and why that is such a reprehensible thing that it needs to be overthrown. So now Having said that, I'm sure there's faithful, chosen, anointed ones out there who might be a little fearful about thinking what it might mean to battle with ten kings and the wild beast. So I hope through this video to convince those faithful chosen ones that this is absolutely necessary and that it will get some collaboration amongst them and agreement so that this will be achieved by those few remaining faithful ones. In my opinion it is these faithful ones 
who will be invited to the marriage feast. And to support that statement, I'd like to go up and show you at the start of the chapter 17 where it said, mentions the kings of the earth who committed fornication. So it's very important to identify these kings of the earth, also the ten kings and the wild beast, and these will need to be overthrown. So if we skip ahead to Revelation chapter 18, we'll see where Babylon the Great falls and that these kings of the earth who committed fornication with her will weep and beat themselves in grief. Now these kings of the earth, in my opinion, are the same evil slave mentioned in Matthew chapter 24 who will weep and beat themselves in grief and gnash their teeth. These are the ones who will be eating and drinking with the drunkards. So now if we go forward to the statements made in Revelation chapter 18 immediately after the overthrow of Babylon the Great, we'll see where it connects to the marriage feast, the marriage of the Lamb. And so here we are now in Revelation chapter 19 and we'll notice it says that Babylon the Great has been overthrown. Praise Jah, you people, and the smoke from her goes on ascending forever and ever. And so the faithful ones have participated in this battle against those kings and overthrown the great harlot who corrupted the earth and those fornicating kings. Notice what happens next. It shows that they said again here, Praise Jah, you people, because Jehovah our God the Almighty has begun to rule as king. Let us rejoice and be overjoyed, and let us give him the glory, because the marriage of the Lamb has arrived and his wife has prepared herself. Yes, it has been granted to her to be arrayed in bright, clean, fine linen, for the fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the Holy Ones. So I would like my audience to now contemplate what those righteous acts are. And so if we now go back to Revelation chapter 17, one of the last righteous acts that those holy ones perform immediately before Jesus Christ returns is this battle described in Revelation chapter 17. Those called and chosen and faithful with him will do so. They will battle with those kings, the wild beast, the harlot, the great harlot, and the kings of the earth who committed fornication. Now if we go to the end of Revelation chapter 19, we'll see that this battle is mentioned once again in chapter 19 verse 19 it says and I saw the wild beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to wage the war with the one seated on the horse and with his army 
And you can see the final outcome is that it is Jesus Christ who will have success in this battle. And so I hope that any faithful anointed ones will get comfort from understanding that even though this battle seems overwhelming, it will be won. This battle is guaranteed to have success for them, for those few remaining ones who are willing to engage the wild beast and those kings of the earth in battle with Jesus Christ. So, I would like the few remaining faithful anointed ones to understand that this battle is absolutely necessary. It's a requirement. It must be achieved before any further blessings can be received. And those blessings are described later on in the book of Revelation. So, this battle is a requirement. It's absolutely necessary. And for those who engage in this battle, once it's completed, the words of God will have been accomplished. So, what are these blessings that the faithful anointed ones hope to achieve? Well, if we go on further into the book of Revelation, we'll see in Revelation chapter 21 that a new heaven and a new earth will appear and that the holy city, New Jerusalem, comes down out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So this is related to the, that marriage feast, the marriage of the Lamb. The tent of God is with mankind and he will reside with them and they will be his peoples. So if we go on it further describes these enormous blessings. It describes the temple and the city and how beautiful it is. And it describes the gates of this beautiful city. It describes the temple Jehovah God the Almighty is his temple, also the Lamb is. It also explains that a disgusting thing will no longer enter into this temple, suggesting that the previous temple has been overcome by a disgusting thing and a lie. And so in this, this new temp temple, it will be completely sacred. Nothing will overcome it. If we go on to the next chapter, chapter 22, and we read the blessing here, it says, And he showed me a river of water of life, clear as crystal, flowing out from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of its broadway. And on this side of the river, and on that side, there were trees of life, producing twelve crops of fruit, yielding their fruits each month. And the leaves of the trees were for the curing of the nations. Now, with this in mind, I'd like to take you to an Old Testament scripture, where it describes almost the exact same circumstance, a river of water of life. And in order to see that, we'll go to the book of Ezekiel. So keep this scripture in mind as we go back to the book of Ezekiel and make a comparison. Ezekiel chapter 47. And it's in these last few chapters of Ezekiel where the temple is described and the, all the obligations are described and yet there is not a person in the world, I believe, who completely understands this, these last few chapters of the book of Ezekiel. 
And this understanding is a part of those waters that go forth, those which are crystal clear. In order to obtain that understanding, that ba battle against the kings of the earth must be accomplished. Before those waters flow out from underneath the temple, those crystal clear waters of understanding, there is a requirement. And that requirement is the battle that I've explained through the video so far. So let's take a look at Ezekiel chapter 47 and compare it to uh, how the temple was described in the book of Revelation. In verse 1 it says, And gradually he brought me back to the entrance of the house, and look, there was water going forth from under the threshold of the house. And this water was going down from under, from the right hand side of the house, south of the altar. So here it describes a trickling of water. So there is some understanding. This trickling of water or knowledge begins to grow. And as time goes by, this water is up to the knees, then up to the hips. Then it's so high that you need to swim and that it was became a torrent that could not be passed through. So, have you seen this, O son of man? That's a good question. Have we seen this happening? In my opinion, that water is already starting to trickle. If you're understanding the videos in my channel, then that water is already trickling. So now compare this next verse to what it says in the book of Revelation. It says, Then he had me walk and had me return to the bank of the torrent. When I returned, why look, on the bank of the torrent there were very many trees, on this side and on that side. The water is going forth to the eastern region and it must go down through the Arabah, and it must come to the sea. It must be brought into the sea itself, is, its water is also actually healed. And it must occur that every living soul that swarms in every place to which the double-sized torrent comes will get life. And it must occur that there will be very many fish, because there is where the water will certainly come. And the sea water will be healed, and everything will be alive where the torrent comes. And notice here, it also mentions in verse 12, the trees. And alongside the torrent there will come up along its bank on this side and on that side all sorts of trees for food. The leafage will not wither, nor will their fruitage be consumed. And their fruitage must prove to be for food and their leafage for healing. So the reason for my showing this temple description in Ezekiel chapter 47 is so that the audience will have no doubts in their mind that it's talking about the exact same thing in the book of Revelation chapter 22 the last chapter and he showed me a river of water of life clear as crystal flowing out from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of its Broadway and on this side of the river and on that side there were trees of life producing twelve crops of fruit yielding their fruits each month and the leaves of the trees were for the curing of the nations so now if my audience is absolutely convinced that this very last chapter of the book of Revelation is talking about the exact same thing that's mentioned in the book of Ezekiel chapter 47 then we can now go on to see the requirement clearly stated in the book of Revelation and its connection to the battle against these fornicating kings 
So now, if we go back again to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 43 this time, we'll see that this temple description has some requirements. The understanding of this and the participation in this final part of the time of the end, immediately before God's will is accomplished, this requirement or the, con the conditions before this can be achieved needs to be understood and it's stated in this chapter, chapter 43 of Ezekiel. And if we go down to verse 4, I'll read it. It says, And the glory of Jehovah itself came into the house by way of the gate, the front of which was towards the east. And a spirit proceeded to raise me up and bring me into the inner courtyard. And look, the house had become full of the glory of Jehovah. And I began to hear someone speaking to me out of the house. And the man himself had come to be standing beside me. And he went on to say to me, Now listen to what this man says. This is the requirement. If you are a faithful anointed one, one of those few remaining faithful ones, this is what you need to understand. It says, Son of man, this is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, where I shall reside in the midst of the sons of Israel to time indefinite, and no more will they, the house of Israel, defile my holy name. Now listen very carefully to this next part. They and their kings. Remember, this is talking about the house of Israel during the time of the end. They and their kings, by their fornication and by the carcasses of their kings at their death, by their putting their threshold with my threshold and their doorpost beside my doorpost with the wall between me and them. And they defiled my holy name by their detestable things that they did so that I went exterminating them in my anger. Listen carefully to the requirement here now. Now let them remove their fornication and the carcasses of their kings far from me and I shall certainly reside in the midst of them to time indefinite. So now I'm asking my audience to understand that this is conditional. This absolutely has to be done. And it's not asking anyone else except those faithful anointed ones to participate in this. This is the battle against those fornicating kings, the ten kings and the wild beast mentioned in the book of Revelation. This must be done. Though the fornication and the carcasses of their kings at their death must be removed. Let them remove their fornication and the carcasses of their kings. So understand that these kings are intimately associated with the sons of Israel. It's not talking about pagan kings here. It says they and their kings. So I would like my audience to very carefully understand that these kings mentioned immediately prior to 
this enormous blessing described here. These kings are not pagan kings. These kings are indeed anointed ones. They are the evil slave. These are the ones who defiled God's name. These are the ones who put their threshold with God's threshold. And I'd like you to very carefully think about what the Apostle Paul said in regard to the man of lawlessness who entered into the temple and lifted himself up above a god. It is those kings who put their threshold with my threshold. And the requirement before any further blessings can be obtained is that these kings need to be removed. And so this battle in the book of Revelation that's described in chapter 17 is in regard to those very same fornicating kings with whom the earth, kings of the earth, committed fornication. And so this battle against the ten kings and the wild beast is absolutely necessary before any of the further blessings described in the book of Revelation and the book of Ezekiel can be obtained. These will battle with the Lamb, but because he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, the Lamb will conquer them. Also those called and faithful and chosen with him will do so. So now I'd like to go back to the book of Ezekiel, to chapter 24, uh, chapter 43, once again, and take a further look at the blessings that will be received after this is achieved. So here we are now back at, in Ezekiel chapter 43, and let's review the condition. Now let them remove their fornication and the carcasses of their kings far from me. And if they do that, God says, then he will certainly reside in the midst of them to time indefinite. So this is the last task. This removal of their fornication and the carcasses of their kings is one of the last righteous acts that the faithful ones who will be invited to the marriage feast will achieve. So if we continue on in the book of Revelation, it further describes this, the blessings that will be received if this task is completed. It says, As for you, O son of man, Inform the house of Israel about the house, that they may feel humiliated because of their errors, and they must measure the pattern. And if, if, if they actually do feel him humili humiliated because of all that they have done, the ground plan of the house and its arrangement and its exits and its entryways and all its ground plans and all its specification and all its ground plans and all its laws do you make known to them and right before their eyes in order that they may observe all its ground plan and all its specifications and may actually carry them out. Please spend some time now contemplating the significance of this. If the fornication is removed and the carcasses of their kings far from God, this blessing will be poured out. You will know every single detail about the temple arrangement and the city described in the book of Ezekiel and also in the book of Revelation. 
you will be told you will not lack in any understanding the waters will be crystal clear but only if this can be achieved if they actually feel humiliated because of all that they have done so I invite you to watch through the other videos in my channel and understand why someone might actually feel humiliated because of all that they have done if you watch through those videos in my channel you'll see the overwhelming task that needs to be achieved it is a battle because very few people feel humiliated about what they have done and in regards to the Watchtower Society and the Jehovah's Witnesses there is no humiliation humiliation very few Jehovah's Witnesses accept any need to feel humiliated because of what they have done they do not believe that they've done anything reprehensible at all please spend time watching through the videos in my channel and if you are one of those few remaining faithful anointed ones you will see the enormous task that's in front of you can you actually convince them to understand what those errors are and will they actually feel humiliated once they understand those errors if you do watch through those videos in my channel I am certain you will discern what an enormous task this is and yet if this is achieved if the fornication is removed and the carcasses of their kings and if you participate then you you will understand the entire temple arrangement everything the waters will become crystal clear please spend some time contemplating this I hope that through watching what I've explained so far you will feel obliged now to look through those other videos in my channel to determine what those errors are and why there is any need to feel humiliated and participate in helping other people understand that this is necessary because only once those other people begin to see those errors and actually feel humiliated until that's achieved none of the rest of this blessing will be received and so this is a part of the enormous battle that's put before those last few remaining faithful ones and that and yet you can be comforted that Jesus Christ understands the immense task and that he will be intimately involved in making sure that this happens that they will indeed feel humiliated because of their errors and in fact if they do not feel humiliated eventually those ones will weep and gnash their teeth spend time please very carefully contemplating what I've described here if you are one of the very few remaining faithful ones however and decide that you will become engaged in this battle uh, I'd like you to understand that we'll, there will be some consequences you need to understand that you are battling against the evil slave these are kings fornicating kings and that if you do become engaged in this battle you are battling against your very own anointed brothers and having said that I would like 
to take you to Ezekiel. Uh, sorry, I'll take you to Isaiah, the last chapter in the book of Isaiah, chapter 66. And understand that if you become engaged in this battle, that these are the things that you can expect to happen to you. It says in verse 5, Hear the word of Jehovah, you men who are trembling at his word. Your brothers that are hating you, that are excluding you by reason of my name, said, May Jehovah be glorified. And yet, he must also appear with rejoicing on your part, and they are the ones that will be put to shame. So, expect that if you become in engaged in this battle, that these brothers, the evil slave, the fornicating kings, that you are hoping might understand the error and that the evil slave will feel some humiliation so that those blessings explained in Ezekiel chapter 43 might be obtained that these brothers are going to hate you for even suggesting that they need to examine their errors and actually feel humiliated they will not feel humiliated instead it is very likely that these same men your brothers men and women will hate you and that they will exclude you or disfellowship you by reason of God's name and they'll believe that they're glorifying Jehovah by doing that and yet notice that it is them who will be put to shame. These brothers will not feel humiliated nor would they, will they accept that they've committed any errors at all. And so notice the consequence. There is a sound of uproar out of the city, a sound out of the temple. It is the sound of Jehovah repaying what is deserved to his enemies. Yet in the book of Revelation, early in, in this video, we read that a disgusting thing and a lie or anything not sacred will not enter into the new temple. And yet here we have enemies inside the temple. Now, notice that towards the end of this chapter that God said that he will come as a fire and with rage and he will rebuke with flames of fire notice also that he mentions towards the end the very last verse in this book the final result for just as the new heavens and the new earth this is the same one mentioned in the book of Revelation that I am making are standing before me is the utterance of Jehovah so the offspring of you people and the name of you people will keep standing these are the people who engage in this battle now notice in the last couple of verses it says and it will certainly occur that from new moon to moon new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath all flesh will come in and bow down before me Jehovah has said and they will actually go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that were transgressing against me the carcasses I suggest that these carcasses are the carcasses of the fornicating kings who were transgressing against Jehovah the fornicating kings who will not accept that they've made any error and do not want to agree that they need to feel any humiliation 
at all. And yet notice it says, for the very worms upon them will not die, and their fire itself will not be extinguished, and they must become something repulsive to all flesh. So what I've suggested so far in this video I'm sure will be very controversial even amongst those last few remaining faithful ones. And yet if you choose to engage in this battle and in this controversy then I'd like you to see what Jehovah says here in Isaiah chapter 66. It says, For as fire, Jehovah himself will for a fact take up the controversy. So, if you are a faithful anointed one engaged in this very controversial battle, Rest assured that Jehovah himself will, for a fact, take up the controversy and he will engage himself in the very same battle with Jesus Christ and those last few remaining faithful ones. Yes, with his sword against all flesh and the slain of Jehovah will certainly become many. Now I'd like to make another point in regards to these carcasses and it, it shows that uh, the people who receive the blessing will go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that were transgressing against me. And what I'd like you to understand is that these men will be separated they will put, be put far away from Jehovah. So there will be a separation of these men from the righteous ones. The fire, their fire itself will not be extinguished. Having said that, I'd like to take you now to Matthew chapter 13. and show you what Jesus describes during the end. He shows that the Son of Man will send forth his angels and they will collect out from his kingdom all things that cause stumbling and persons doing lawlessness and they will pitch them into the fiery furnace. There is where their weeping and the gnashing of their teeth will be. And so it is these men who will weep and gnash their teeth. Having said that, I'd like to take you now to Matthew chapter 24 and remind you of a scripture, a very similar scripture, where Jesus Christ says, In verse 48, but if ever that evil slave should say in his heart, my master is delaying, and should start to beat his fellow slaves, his brothers, the, the last few remaining anointed ones, and should eat and drink with the confirmed drunkards, the master of that slave will come on a day that he does not expect, and in an hour that he does not know, and will punish him with the greatest severity, and will assign him his part with the hypocrites, there is where his weeping and the gnashing of his teeth will be. That evil slave will be separated. They will be put far away from the righteous ones. Having said that, I'd like to now take you to Matthew chapter 3 
and remind you what John the Baptist said in regard to the fire and the baptism. So, this is what John the Baptist said in regard to Jesus Christ. I, for my part, baptize you with water because of your repentance. But the one coming after me is stronger than I am, whose sandals I am not fit to take off. That one will baptize you people with Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing shovel is in his hand, and he will completely clean up his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the storehouse, but the chaff he will burn up with fire that cannot be put out. And so, who are the chaff? Well, let's now go back to Isaiah. The last chapter in Isaiah, chapter 66. And we'll see the fire that cannot be put out. So, let me remind you again, this is in verse 23. It says, And it will certainly occur that from new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath all flesh will come in and bow down to before me, Jehovah has said. And they will actually go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that were transgressing against me. For the very worms upon them will not die, and their fire itself will not become, will not be extinguished. A fire that cannot be put out. Understand that it is the carcasses of the men that were transgressing against Jehovah. So is there a transgression that happens in the last part of the days? Well, let's now go to Daniel and chapter 11. So what is this transgression against Jehovah? That these men are complicit in. If we look in this chapter, we can indeed find a transgression. And it's described starting in verse 31. And here in verse 31, in fact, we'll go a little further back. It says, And he will actually go back and hurl denunciations against the Holy Covenant. So if we are living in those last days, Please understand which Holy Covenant is in effect right now. So he will go back and hurl denunciations against the Holy Covenant and act effectively. And he will go, have to go back and will give consideration to those leaving that Holy Covenant. And there will be arms that will stand up proceeding from him and they will actually profane the sanctuary, the fortress and remove the constant feature and they will certainly put in place the disgusting thing that is causing desolation and so in this sanctuary or temple a disgusting thing will enter into it and yet remember in the book of Revelation where I pointed out to you that in the new temple when the new heavens and the new earth arrive in that new temple a disgusting thing, a lie, will not enter into it. And so what temple currently exists? It's the Christian temple. A disgusting thing will enter into that Christian temple. Now, notice very carefully what Daniel is told next. And those who are acting wickedly against the covenant, he will lead into apostasy by means of smooth words. So this is a giant, a very large, unrighteous deception against the people involved in this holy covenant. The anointed ones, the chosen ones. But it says here there will be some people that can see this and understand it. It says, but as regards the people who are knowing their God, they will prevail 
and act effectively. So now if you are one of those last few remaining faithful ones, knowing their God, then how could you prevail and act effectively if your temple, the Christian temple, has been profaned and the constant feature has been removed from it and replaced by a disgusting thing? What is it that you must do in order to prevail and act effectively? I suggest to you that if you've reached up to this point in my video that you now understand what you must do in order to prevail and act effectively in this terrible very reprehensible circumstance that has been perpetrated through those fornicating kings they are intimately involved in profaning the sanctuary, removing the constant feature, and putting in place the disgusting thing that will cause desolation. And so, if you need to understand what that disgusting thing is, or the constant feature that is removed, I strongly recommend that you watch the other videos in my channel otherwise you will not understand this and you will not prevail and you will not act effectively all of these things need to be understood in order to prevail and act effectively the last few remaining faithful anointed ones need to collaborate together in agreement in order to prevail and act effectively because it's not saying that there's one person that will do this is a special group of people who know their God the last few remaining faithful ones having said that now I'll take you back to the book of Revelation and this time go to chapter 12 are you one of the last few remaining ones if you are then Notice what it says here. Your battle is not just against those fornicating kings. It says, And the dragon grew wrathful at the woman and went off to wage war with the remaining ones of her seed who observe the commandments of God and have the work of bearing witness to Jesus. And so if you are one of these last few remaining ones, do you understand what it is that God requires? Let me remind you about what was said in the book of Ezekiel chapter 43. Remove the carcasses of those kings and their fornication far from me. Separate them. And so will you be observing those commandments that is a commandment in the book of Ezekiel and I hope that through the video I've presented you'll understand what to do in order to act effectively and prevail during these last days but notice also here it says the two wings of the great eagle were given the woman that she might fly into the wilderness to her place. There is where she is fed for a time and times and half a time away from the face of the serpent. And so the two wings of the great eagle were given the woman. So it's these eagles who will participate in separating the carcass. So wherever that carcass is, I would expect to find these eagles in battle against those fornicating kings. And so having said that, we should go to something else Jesus Christ said, and it may help you understand 
a profundity. So we'll go to Luke chapter 17 where the separation is mentioned and Jesus Christ himself said these words while he was describing what the last days would be like to his apostles. And notice what he says here. In, I'll start in verse 34. It says, I tell you, in that night two men will be in one bed. The one will be taken along, but the other will be abandoned. There will be two women grinding at the same mill. The one will be taken along, but the other will be abandoned. And so here there is a separation. People will be removed far from Jehovah. And notice what Jesus, what they asked him. So in response they said to him, Where, Lord? And he said to them, Where the body is, or the carcass, there also the eagles will be gathered together. If you look at several other Bible translations, it says where the carcass is, there also the eagles will be gathered together. Having said that, let's go back again to Matthew chapter 13. And hopefully we can now better understand what Jesus Christ told his disciples. It says here, Therefore, just as the weeds are collected and burned with the fire, so it will be in the conclusion, the last days. The Son of Man will send forth his angels, and they co will collect out from his kingdom all things that cause stumbling and persons who are doing lawlessness. That carcass will be removed and they will pitch them into the fiery furnace, the fire that will not be put out. There is where their weeping and the gnashing of their teeth will be, the evil slave, the fornicating kings. And at that exact time, the righteous ones will shine as brightly as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let him that has ears listen. And so, having said that, do you understand now what Jesus Christ likely meant when he said, where the carcass is, there the righteous, the eagles, will be gathered together. Where that carcass is, is in Jesus Christ's kingdom. The car Jesus Christ will collect out from his kingdom and put far away from Jehovah the carcasses of those fornicating kings. And he will do that in a battle where the faithful and chose, chosen anointed ones will be participating in the controversy. They will understand that requirement stated in Ezekiel chapter 43 that these carcasses have to be removed and put far away from Jehovah in order to obtain that final blessing that happens after the battle. Understand that the righteous ones, the eagles will gather together in the same place that the carcass is. And so the carcass is in Jesus Christ's kingdom and so also will the eagles be there. And they'll be there with Jesus Christ. I hope you understand the profundity of what I'm explaining here. So, having said that, I'd like to go back to 
uh, Matthew chapter 24 now, and where Jesus Christ explained what would happen when he returned. And this is where it says, But if ever that evil slave should say in his heart, My master is delayed, and should start to beat his fellow slaves. Okay, so this is the carcass of the fornicating kings. Those kings will beat their brothers, the fellow slaves, and they will eat and drink with the drunkards. Now, in my opinion, the eating and drinking with the drunkards is the celebration of the memorial, the uh, wine and the bread. And so I would suggest that you very carefully consider who you celebrate the memorial with because you do not want Jesus Christ to return and find you celebrating this memorial, eating and drinking with those fornicating kings. This is very, very important in regards to the memorial celebration. So notice that the master of the slave will come on a day that he does not expect and in an hour that he does not know. So the evil slave will not know when this hour starts. And so if you are a faithful anointed one, do you know when this hour starts? Having said that, I'll take you to the book of Revelation once again. And we'll go back to chapter 17 chapter about those fornicating kings, uh, the kings of the earth who committed fornication. And we'll notice if we go to verse 12, it says, The ten horns that you saw mean ten kings who have not received a kingdom, but they do receive authority as kings one hour with the wild beast. These have one thought, and so they give their power and authority to the wild beast. It is these who will battle with the land. So do you know if it is the hour? I'd like to suggest to you that that one hour started when those kings gave their power and authority to the wild beast. And so I invite you to watch another video on my channel about the time when those kings gave away their power. That is the hour that we can expect Jesus Christ to return. And so if you watch that video, I expect you'll understand exactly when that hour started and you will be one who does know the hour when Jesus Christ will return. So what happens when that hour has ended? Well, if we go to verse 17, it explains it. For God put it into their hearts to carry out his thought, even to carry out their one thought by giving their kingdom to the wild beast. Remember, it's only for one hour. They give their kingdom to the wild beast, and at the end of that hour, the words of God will have been accomplished. At the end of that hour, the carcasses of those kings will be moved, removed far away from Jehovah. And so, do you know the hour? The evil slave do not know the hour. So I'm asking you, if you are one of those last few remaining faithful ones, if you now understand the hour. And when that hour is over, the words of God will have been accomplished. And so we can expect during that hour that God will have the, the requirement that uh, God stated in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 43, will have been accomplished. 
though they and their kings by their fornication and by the carcasses of their kings at their death that those kings those fornicating kings the carcasses of those kings will be removed and put far away from Jehovah they will be separated the chaff will be separated from the wheat and the chaff the carcasses of those kings will be burned with fire that cannot be put out and what will happen if that is done God will reside in the midst of them to time indefinite the will of God will have been accomplished and so if you are a faithful anointed one are we living in that hour do you know the hour please watch that other video in my channel about the ten kings who give away their power so now I'd like to wrap up this video and hopefully uh, I will have achieved my purpose that those last few remaining holy ones will understand what is required in order to act effectively and prevail in a, cer in a terrible circumstance where the constant feature has been removed and a disgusting thing has been put inside the temple and that in understanding how to act effectively they might collaborate in agreement with the other few remaining faithful anointed ones in achieving this purpose so that the final blessing might be obtained and I shall certainly reside in the midst of them to time indefinite so if you are now understanding some of these things in the book of Ezekiel and, and uh, Revelation and that it's becoming clearer for you then I suggest that already that the water is starting to go down from under the right hand, hand side of the house and that this water is starting to trickle. Water was trickling from the right hand side. If you are understanding these things then you're participating in receiving this water and that if you participate and collaborate in achieving this thing that is set down as a requirement in Ezekiel chapter 43 that this water of understanding will continue to grow up to the ankles up to the knees up to the hips to a point where you where it becomes so vast that it's crystal clear everything in Ezekiel everything in the book of Re Revelation will be understood and that eventually the will of God will have been achieved and that God will reside with mankind until time indefinite the blessings are enormous thank you for watching this video and uh, if there are things you don't understand uh, please go through the rest of my channel and watch those videos and you will identify the disgusting thing the constant feature the ten kings the wild beast the mark of the wild beast and this video is a call out to those last few remaining faithful ones that they might collaborate together in achieving this enormous blessing Thank you for watching this video.